Welcome to the Roadmap to Secure Love. In today's episode, Kim and Kyle discuss how jealousy and envy impact relationships and how to navigate these emotions with vulnerability and understanding. Let's dive in. Today, Kim and I are going to talk about two really powerful emotions that show up in our lives and in our intimate relationships. Those emotions are jealousy and envy. Kim, can you define what jealousy is? Yeah, jealousy is this feeling of that I'm going to lose something. So I have something, Mm -hmm. a relationship, a friendship, and something is threatening it. And I'm afraid that I'm going to lose it. Mm -hmm. Envy, on the other hand, is I don't actually have it, but I'm looking at, at something and I'm thinking, man, I wish I could get that. Absolutely. So, oh my gosh, this person has a wonderful car, a house, lots of money. I don't. So Mm -hmm. I wish I had that. I'm envious. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. My partner is not spending time with me, but it's spending more time with somebody else. I'm scared. I might, they might choose them over me or like them more. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to be jealous. Mm -hmm. And it shows up differently, you know, for, for a jealous person, you know, especially if I, I'm anxiously attached to that person, I'm going to, you know, maybe gossip about them, maybe go out with my own friends and post it on Instagram of like how I didn't need them. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm, I'm not going to be vulnerable about what I'm needing and what I'm wanting. Right. I think this is one of the things that's important about both these emotions, but we'll stick with jealousy for now is these emotions have very big attachment significance, right? Jealousy, just as Kim talks about, is I'm afraid I'm going to lose often a relationship, Right. And we're hardwired for connection. And so we're, we get fearful, we're going to lose it. And so jealousy comes up kind of looking at what we might lose. Oh, that person's laughing more. My partner's laughing more with this person than they do with me. Could I lose them? Right. That, that jealousy, that fear might get activated. And depending our attachment on our attachment style, that will influence how we react to those moments. And so if we have an anxious attachment style, if we're fearful, we see our partner laughing with someone else and joking and they're having a good time, that jealousy starts to come up. We're probably not going to go to them and be like, hey, here's what this bothered me. Here's maybe what I need. I just need some reassurance that you still love me, whatever that might be. We're not going to do that. Instead, we're fearful of being abandonment, but fearful of being abandoned. We're fearful of not being enough, not being chosen. And so we also learn because we have this anxious attachment style from our early environment that it's not always the best move to go directly to someone and bring up the, the fear or the jealousy. So instead, we try to create that same feeling we're having on the inside for the other partner. And so we might go out later that night and go to a singles club or go to some other event and try to get someone else to flirt with us or create a situation in which our partner would get jealous, which might give us information about how much we matter to them. Right. Right? So it's a very manipulative way to try to get the underlying attachment need, which is totally valid, which is to feel safe and secure and chosen. Right. And so that's how an anxious attachment style might show up. We have a little bit more of a wooden attachment, we might dismiss the jealousy. We might think to ourselves, oh, I'm really great. If they choose someone else, so what? It doesn't matter. Got a really important relationship anyways. Even though we've been together five years, I'll find someone else, right? So we kind of minimize how significant the relationship is inside to try to protect ourselves. Kim, anything to add to those two attachment styles right now, just starting around jealousy? No, but I, what I wanted to talk about was what a secure attachment looks like. What does it look like? Right. It's going to be where I can talk about my feelings in a non-judgmental way and a non-blaming way. Mm -hmm. I saw you laughing a lot with this other person. 
And I'm so happy you're having fun, but there was a part of me that wondered, am I lovable? I miss us. Why aren't we laughing like that together? And I want to work on that. I want to see us laugh the way that you did with them. How can we do that? That's a secure attachment. That's <clears throat> where you're allowing yourself to be vulnerable, owning how you're feeling and not blaming the other person. And then taking action and saying, I want to work on this. Mm -hmm. I want us to look different. I want to do this with you. I want to do this with you. Mm -hmm. Which is, is so different. And so here's some of the key things. With jealousy or envy, these emotions come up because they're activated by something. Right? I need to know I feel secure in the relationship. I need to know the relationship's growing. Right? That might be what jealousy is. Envy might be, I want the nice car to feel like I matter or feel like I'm significant in this world, or I want this type of relationship so I feel like I'm significant in the world. Whatever that might be, it all ties down to deeper attachment needs of feeling safe, secure, and that we are significant. And Kim, what you're helping people see is when those emotions come up, connect with them within yourselves, be able to start to understand why is this happening for me? And what is it that I need within my relationship or friendship? Or what can I do for myself to start to move, use those emotions to get closer towards what I need to feel safe, secure, and significant? Yeah. yeah. And envy is the same way. I mean, when we see somebody that has something that we don't have, mm -hmm. there's a fear of like, well, they have a lot more money. Am I going to be able to retire? Yeah. or um, they get to have a lot more vacations and I'm just grinding all the time and working. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it doesn't feel good. I'm mm -hmm. envious of that, mm -hmm. right? And so what happens is if we're anxious, we might overwork and constantly not be able to take a break or we might shut down and not become their friend because we don't want to see it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's this avoidant. Like, ah, oh, I'm just not going to be their friend because I don't want to have to be reminded that I don't have those things. But in a secure relationship, we can notice our envy and it gives us more information. Mm -hmm. And so does jealousy. Jealousy gives us more information. Absolutely. Where are we in our relationships? What are we looking for? And how can we do it in a way that is healing, that is not going to burn us out, and that's realistic and vulnerable? I think this is what's so important is when we tune into these emotions and what need they're trying to get us to pay attention to, we then have a roadmap for how to meet that need directly, whether that is vulnerably communicating with our partner, our jealousy, whether that is bringing up our envy with friends or our partner and starting to go, how can I move more towards that? Or how can I get this need met in a different way and be creative about it? It allows us to own the emotion and the underlying need and take steps to create that, kind of pave that road to what we actually need to feel safe, secure, and significant. Yeah. And when we can do that, our relationships begin to change. Jealousy has less of a hold over us. Right. Envy has less of a hold over us. You know, when we start to name it and own it and know why it's there, mm -hmm. it's giving us information, slow down. What's the information that we need to know? And what do we do about that in a way that's non-blaming? right? How do we do that? Once we learn how to do that, these feelings have less power over us. They do. When we name it, we tame it, and we change it. We tame it, change it. Mm -hmm. So in summary, listen to the jealousy and envy. Make space to understand what it's trying to do to help you what need it's trying to help you fight for, pay attention to. And then 
take action by being vulnerable and owning that emotion and either sharing it, taking the risk to share it with your partner and what you need, focus on what is good for the relationship and for you, or with envy, what is the plan I can take to help me get that underlying need met? Today's key takeaways include, one, understanding jealousy and envy, two, the impact of attachment styles when these emotions arise, three, the power of vulnerability, and four, how direct communication strengthens relationships. Follow the roadmap to secure love on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. Sign up for the Secure Attachment Path course to learn practical tools for building secure connections. Link in the show notes. Until next time, stay connected and keep listening with love.